and welcome to this week's YouTube video. This week I'm going to be painting this lovely little chihuahua and I'm going to be talking about how to loosen up your style and paint more expressively. So if you're a type painter, I'm just going to show you a couple of exercises to help you loosen up. Okay then, so the first exercise, grab an object, anything will do, I'm using a cup and just do a quick sketch of it, spending no more than a couple of minutes on it. So the aim here is to get a likeness as quickly as you can without worrying too much about how polished it looks. Painting at speed will make you concentrate on the general shapes that you're looking at, the obvious values that you're seeing, and you'll also edit out all the detail that you don't need, because you'll have to, because you've got to do it quickly. So the second exercise then is to try it again. So use the same object again, but to try and do it this time in a minimum number of strokes. So here I think it was approximately 20 strokes, but, but I actually lost count to be honest with you. So to do this, you're gonna have to select um, different size brushes. So for example, I used a large brush to try and get my shapes down quickly and is in as few a strokes as possible. So the last thing I want to talk about before we move on to the dog time lapse video very quickly then is how to hold your brush. So in diagram A, you'll know, it actually is a pen, but pretend it's a brush. So I'm holding my brush exactly as I would a pen. So this will result in much more considered brush strokes. So in diagram B then, I'm holding my brush or my pen um, more like a spoon. So this will allow me more movement in my wrist and I can make much more expressive strokes and movements with it. So let's now have a look at the time lapse video. And I just want to go back to what we were talking about, about the spoon and the pen and the different ways to hold the brush. Um, so where I want considered detail, I am more likely to hold my brush like a pen. So for example, um, round the eyes and perhaps the nose. Um, so I want much, much tighter strokes because this is my central point of focus. So I want you to look at this area in a more considered way. However, where I want expressive strokes, I'm more likely to hold my brush like a spoon. So for example, in the areas um, under his chin, on his, on his chest, where there's a lot of lovely fur movement going on. I don't want to be painting that tightly, holding my brush like a pen. Especially when you're painting long haired dogs and the fur tends to get sort of longer um, out with its face and around its chin and all that area there. You really want to be painting that as loosely as you can. So just to give you a little bit of information then on how I've actually done this painting and the process. Um, that I've gone through to get it um, to get it from A to B. So it's been done in four sittings and the paper has been covered in a wash of raw sienna and terps before I start. So the palette that I'm using here is the Zorn palette. So that's ivory black. In this instance, I'm using titanium white, but you can use flake white, cadmium red and yellow ochre. I'm also using Gamsol to thin my paint for the first two layers and I'm laying it very, very thinly just to get all my areas covered. And then for layer three and four, I'm using much thicker paint and a tiny, tiny bit of linseed oil. So the bulk of the work for this painting then is done in layer three. That's my, um, the, the time, the most amount of time that I spend um, on any layer is layer three and layer four is just basically a fixing small details layer. 
So I wanted to talk about some general principles then on how to achieve more expressive painting. So if you're a type painter, um, somebody who loves detail, it's actually, it's quite hard um, to try and achieve that loose expressive finish. But there are things that you can do that will instantly change your style. So I'm just going to go through these and give you a little bit more detail. So first of all, then, I would suggest trying to reduce down what you see as much as possible. So you need to edit, really, um, a bit like I did in the warm up exercises, painting the mugs. So concentrate on painting the large, obvious shapes and values. Do not try to go in with detail. Just cover the surface in shapes and values that are obvious to you. And then once you have those in, you can begin to add some detail in the areas that you're going to focus on. Notice how loose and edited my painting is for quite a long time before I go in and start to put in the detail. I don't start putting in any detail really until layer three. So the second thing that you can do then is to leave things out. So when using a photograph as a reference, it's very tempting to, to paint every little hair and everything that you, you can see in the photo. But this will very often result in a painting that looks, it, it just ends up looking wrong. Because the eye, it just doesn't see things like that. So it just looks odd. So instead then, just try leaving things out. And if you're not sure where to edit, I would suggest that you, you squint down at your reference photo as much as you can. And if basically, if you can't see it, there's no point putting it in. It doesn't need to be there. So just leave it out. And you can experiment as well with how much you squint. So you can squint loads, you can squint a little bit, and each way will achieve a different result. So if you are quite a tight painter, maybe just start off squinting a little bit and then build up to like full on squinting. So the third point I would make then is to try not to have everything as perfectly sharp outline edges. So try and remember that by putting in sort of neat edges to start with, this is ultimately going to restrict your movement and hold you back. Too many hard edges in a painting will make it look off, so stick to blocking in areas and then refining the detail later. And don't feel as though you have to smooth out all your brush marks either. You can leave them in in selected areas, but remember the importance of contrast, so a very rough background will look great against a smaller subject or vice versa, so you could have like a very smooth background and like a very scruffy object. It doesn't all have to be smooth and it doesn't all have to be covered in brush marks, just be selective. Another thing that you can try doing is using a brush that is too big and you feel really uncomfortable using. So this will force you to make bolder choices and you'll not get lost in too much detail. So once you have got your areas blocked in, you can then go in with a smaller brush where you want to put in your sort of focused detailed areas. So remember again how important contrast is and um, having a painting that has both detail and looser areas makes it look more expressive. And lastly, if all else fails, move the paint around and smudge it up with your fingers. Scratch out areas with the back of the brush. Lots of different marks create interest. So you can really, you can pick up anything and try and make a mark with it on the painting. You don't always just have to use a brush. So I hope you have enjoyed my YouTube video then. Please check out my website, sarahhallidayart.com for more details on lessons and online classes that I also run. I try and post a video once a week on my YouTube channel. So please subscribe and I'll see you for the next one.